next we have the bridge rectifier basically the bridge rectifier has as a purpose to rectify or to make the current a DC current or a continue current okay so the bridge rectifier transform the alternating current to a DC current so as you can see basically the bridge rectifier contain four diodes as you can see four diodes inside it here we have this terminal means plus here we have basically plus here we have plus this terminal is connected to the capacitor basically to the filtering capacitor and here minus basically we have here minus then we have the relay okay so the relay also is one of the main important component in the electronic basically the relay contain two components inside it an inductor and a switch basically an SPST switch a single pole single draw as you can see so when this inductor are energized means when we apply a voltage here the current will pass through this inductor and then and then the switch will close it automatically so that's why we find here in the switch basically four terminals or more okay two terminals for the inductor and two other terminals for the switch okay as you can see here okay for example if we have here zero volt dc the switch will be open and if we apply a voltage here 12 volt for example or 24 volts the switch will be closed and then we will get a continuity here or the voltage will pass so here we have another component the crystal oscillator basically this is the symbol for the crystal oscillator its reference usually is x or y in the motherboards here we have some real pictures of crystal oscillators so basically this crystal oscillators is always exist near to the frequency ICs. this crystal oscillator gives to the circuit a very specific frequency for example here we have 12,000 kilohertz or 12 megahertz okay so this crystal oscillators with the clock generator IC are essential for the synchronization of any motherboard so without the synchronization the motherboard components cannot work together okay then here we have the motor so basically the motor contains inside it a rotor and stator basically this is the stator the fixed part here where we have the inductors and this is a rotor okay this metal the turned part okay so basically this is the symbols for the motor as you can see we have m here or this symbol also okay then we have the voltage regulators we find this kind of voltage regulators in the laptop motherboards or smartphone motherboards okay and of course you can find a voltage regulators with terminals or THT voltage regulators basically we have here three pins one pin for input another pin for output and of course the third pin is for the ground so input output for example the input is 12 volt the output is 5 volt okay so this IC regulates the voltage okay then we have the optocoupler so basically the optocoupler also is one of the main important components in every switch mode power supply so basically the optocoupler contain inside it two components a photo transistor and a light emitting diode okay as you can see here for example for this kind of optocoupler or opto isolator with four terminals we have here an LED diode that emits the light and here we have a photo transistor basically the photo transistor works exactly as a normal transistor but for the photo transistor 
in its base it did not get a voltage in its base but a light so the phototransistor is controlled by the light emitting by by this diode we find this kind of opto coupler or opto isolator in the switch mode power supplies as you can see here basically the opto coupler controls the output voltage if the output voltage is not correct the opto coupler will report that to the IC, to the frequency or to oscillator, and then the oscillator will adjust the frequency in order to get the right voltage. Okay, so the optocoupler control the output voltage. So we have these two kinds of couplers. You can find a four terminal optocouplers, as you can see here. This is its circuit. And here basically we have a four terminal optocoupler or you can find a six or five terminal optocoupler the same working principle always you can find an LED diode here okay and a phototransistor and of course here these two pins are not connected sometimes you can find that the six the pin number six is connected to the base of the phototransistor so basically the diode or the LED diode is connected always to the output of the circuit and then the phototransistor is connected to the controller IC or the oscillator if for example we should get in the output 5 volt and we get just 4 volt so the light here in the diode will be decreased and then the phototransistor will inform the control IC that the output is not 5 volt, it is just a 4 volt. So the IC will increase the frequencies or the oscillation in order to get 5 volts. The TVS diodes. So basically the TVS diodes or a transient voltage separations diode we called it also a thyristor, okay? So it is an electronic device that is used to protect electronic circuits from voltage spikes or unexpected voltage changes. A TVS or a transient voltage separation diode may be any directional or bidirectional. As any direction device it operates as a rectifier that can handle very large peak currents so as you can see here in the image basically you can find a tvs with two terminals or even three terminals and over here we have its schematic as you can see two diodes that is connected together as you can see so this is its symbol so the purpose of the tvs diode is to protect the electronic circuits from voltage spikes or unexpected voltage changes so the power jack basically the power jack you can find this kind of power jack in the laptop motherboards okay so the power jack is the input of the power for the motherboard so basically you can find power jacks with two terminals or power jacks with three terminals so basically here the schematic is for a power jack with two terminals as you can see where we have the plus terminal here in the center as you can see here and the negative terminal in the edges okay so of course the power jack is one of the most common faults of every laptop motherboard so if you get a deed or a failed motherboard you should always check the power jack because if the power jack is failed or desoldered the power cannot get into the motherboard that's why you should always check the soldering of the power jack so in the next slide we gonna see the THT LEDs or light emitting diode so we have seen before the SMD diodes as you can see you have seen that this is SMD diodes or flat diodes okay and over here as you can see we have the LEDs the THT 
lead as you can see so this is basically a symbol with these two arrow but here basically i want to identify with you the cathode and the anode in the led so always as you can see inside the led here you will find two parts or two terminals so always the big part here inside the led means the cathode okay always the big part means the cathode so the switches here as you can see we have smd switch this is an smd switch or surface mounted device and over here we have a true hole technology switch with these terminals as you can see and basically this is the symbol for the switch okay so here if you focus here you will see that these switches contain four terminals as you can see but basically these four terminals are just basically two terminals because two terminals are connected together and also these two terminals are connected together so these two terminals should be connected to the ground and these two terminals should be connected to the power rail the same here also you will find that these two terminals are connected to the ground and the other terminals are connected to the power rail you can find also this kind of buttons as you can see basically here this is basically a single pole double throw we call this single pole double throw because we have two throw here the true the c through and the b through and we have just one pole as you can see so this is a single pole double throw switch okay so the dc batteries so basically the dc batteries is easy to understand it contains just two terminals as you can see the negative terminal and the positive terminal as you can see here this is basically the symbol for a multi batteries for this we have two batteries as you can see this is the first one here we have plus and minus and this is the second one plus and minus okay here in the image we have a 9 volt battery so the amplifiers so for the amplifiers as you can see basically you can find many types of amplifiers you can find many types of ICs ICs with 8 terminals 4 terminals or even 16 terminals or more so basically this is the basic sample for the amplifier as you can see with two inputs and one output as you can see here we have two inputs and one output and of course here we have the v is plus and the v is minus okay so here as you can see always we will find a positive input and a negative input and here we have the v out or v output so the bios or basic input output system so this is basically the fl a flash rom here this bios ic contain a flash rom or a software inside it this kind basically of ic's are used in every computer televisions tablets or even smartphones so basically you can find this kind of bios with eight pins in laptops and computers okay it contains eight pin as you can see so always the first pin here we have this dot here or this hole means this is the first pin we have the chip select this is the second pin we have the data output this is basically the output here basically we have the right product this is the ground always for the BIOS ICs the pin number 4 is connected to the ground and the pin number 8 is connected to the VCC always so the pin number 5 this is the data input here we have the clock for the synchronization here we have the hold and the VCC in the pin number 8 so how can you check for example in laptops how can you check if the power is good or not in every laptop so by checking the first pin of the bios so if you plug just the power adapter to the laptop or the battery to the laptop without powering on the laptop you should find here or you have to find here 3.3 volts so electric clamps basically this is very simple 
here this is the symbol for lamps or bulbs as you can see with two terminals okay as you can see and of course there is many types of lamps so the CMOS battery or complementary metal oxide semiconductor as you can see so this is basically the CMOS battery that power the laptop motherboards and the computer motherboards and other devices in order to keep the configuration and the seating always safe so as you can see here this is the reference for this battery basically this battery here we have 2032 basically this battery is for computers okay and here we have its voltage we have 3 volt lithium battery okay you can find also this kind of battery but for this battery basically you can find it just in the laptops okay of course 3 volt its voltage is 3 volt and basically this is the symbol for the battery with plus here as you can see and minus in the other edge okay we have here plus and the minus is in the back of this battery but for this kind of battery of course we have two cables the red cable is plus and the black one is minus so here basically this is a thermistor resistor so this symbol is for thermistor resistor as you can see this is a resistor with this arrow means variable resistor here as we have seen before this is a single pole double true switch we have one pole and we have double true here and of course you can find a single pole four true or a double pole double true or a three pole double true four pole four true it's true so here as you can see basically this is the symbol for a photoresistor as you can see this is basically a photoresistor symbol okay so for the led diode the arrows is in other direction okay but for the photoresistor we have the arrows in this direction as you can see means a photoresistor basically this is the symbol for the track as you can see the track basically contains three terminals exactly like a transistor so we have here t1 t2 and the gates okay so this is the symbol for the track of course here we have symbol for resistors we have seen that this symbol is a us symbol and this is universal symbol or a standard symbol that you can find everywhere so basically this is the symbol for the ic here we have a dot as you can see we have this dot here means this is the pin number one two three four five here and this is the analog ground symbol as you can see so because there is there are there is many types of ground so this is the analog ground over here we have the digital ground as you can see you can find this kind of ground in the in the computer motherboards and other small devices and here as you can see we have the chassis ground as you can see this is the symbol for the chassis ground so we have analog ground digital ground and chassis ground this is basically the milliampere meter symbol as you can see here the circle with ma means milliampere meter this is the voltmeter symbol we have v here so basically to measure the voltage in any circuit so this is the ampere meter as you can see we have a this is ampere meter to measure the current and here we have the ohm meter as you can see we have the ohm here to measure the resistors but basically you can find that one device can gather all these parameters can gather the voltmeter the ohm meter uh, ampere meter etc the multimeter using the multimeter or the digital multimeter you can measure any thing you want this symbol basically is for ceramic capacitor okay or this this capacitor is not a polarized capacitor this is a normally open switch okay so here we have as you can see basically the wire and this is a normally open switch okay and here normally closed switch as you can see normally closed switch
here we have as you can see the double pole single throw okay double pole single throw switch why double pole because we have two poles but we have just one through as you can see basically we have one through here and here as you can see basically this is a relay okay here we have an inductor and here we have a switch okay this is basically a relay a double pole single throw relay and over here we have also a relay as you can see this is inductor basically here we have two switches so this is a double pole we have the first pole the second pole and double throw as you can see double throw so basically this is a fused this is a switch but this fluid is a fused switch so this switch contain a fuse it is a protected switch this is basically the dc voltage source okay and over here we have ac voltage as you can see this is the ac voltage source or power supply here we have the adjustable power supply okay so basically here we have a power supply or a batteries so if we we add this arouse means adjustable power supply here basically this is a logic gate this is the end gate okay we have two inputs and one output so this sample is for the end gate and here we have an end gate always the same as end gate but here we have this circle means not an end gate or not end okay basically here we have the or gates okay always two inputs and one output but this is its symbol as you can see so if we add this small circle means nor gate okay so this is a nor gate and here we have xr gate as you can see this is its symbol basically here we have a double line here okay we have two inputs and one output and here this is a not gate basically okay a not gate uh, here basically we have a schematic that gather many component here we have a device okay this is basically ac source okay ac source let's assume that the voltage here is 220 volt or 220 okay and here this is basically a, a bridge rectifier four diodes as you can see we have four diodes always here we have the anode and the cathode and here basically you have wires okay so this symbol here this wire means we have here no connection here between this wire and this wire okay but here we have connection okay and over here we have the dc so after the bridge rectifier we get a dc voltage here okay